Hello, welcome back to Iggy's Toy Parade and Soldier Review. This is your host, Iggy. And today we're going to look at some Napoleonic figures produced by Blue Box Toys. So a little bit about Blue Box Toys before we start showing you the different poses here. Blue Box Toys was founded in 1952 by Peter Chan. And it's a Hong Kong-based company. And these figures here were produced under a line called Blue Box Elite Soldiers. And I'm going to show you the bottom of one of these figures so you can see their lo company logo here. And it says that they are made in Hong Kong. Do I have it upside down again? I can't see it. I'm assuming that I had it right the first time. But um, I got the, uh, Blue Box Toys confused with BBI, Blue Box International, which is also a Hong Kong-based company that produced one six scale figures. Some of my, actually, some of my favorite figures in what six scale it was produced by BBI. And uh, they are also a Hong Kong company, but they were founded in 1991. And uh, like I just mentioned, Blue Box Toys founded by Peter Chan in 1952. So two separate entities, uh, but it's quite understandable why they would be confusing. They they might be connected somehow now. Who knows? Because toy companies, there's not very many independent toy companies. They've been gobbled up by either Mattel or Hasbro. And uh, small companies don't have much of a chance. Now, why Hong Kong? Well, Hong Kong is like the toy shop of the world. Uh, about 80% of toys made today are manufactured in China and more specifically in Hong Kong. So I, I, you know, I tell you what, guys, Iggy would love to go to Hong Kong and visit uh, some hobby stores there and see in toy stores to see what they have. It must be uh, pretty fantastic. So where should we begin? We have Arthur Wellesley, the Duke of Wellington at the top here, and he's in civilian clothes. Uh, that's how he was dressed for the Battle of uh, Waterloo. Uh, Napoleon had, uh, of course, begun his march, and uh, Wellington was taken out of, uh, I guess, a party or a ball or something. And uh, he was still in civilian clothes. And uh, this one over here, of course, of course, is Napoleon Bonaparte. Now, I've been fortunate to pose and have my picture taken with Napoleon and also with the Duke of Wellington. And how that happened is I, I was in London and I went to Madame Tussauds and they had figures of Napoleon and uh, the Duke of Wellington looking at a map. And there was no barricade around them. You could walk right up to them and look them in the eye. And uh, so that was kind of fun that they let you get so close to them. Uh, they did, I did have my picture taken with Hitler, but he was behind a glass case because you can imagine people would vandalize that one considerably, whereas most uh, people today don't know who these two guys are. I spoke with a girl that was visiting Jacksonville from England, and she didn't know who the Duke of Wellington was or uh, Lord Nelson. She never heard of him, and I'm like, wow. You know, a country can't last very long if the its people do not know its customs, tradition, or history, and that's what's happening, not only in England, but all of Europe and also in America. 
I talk to kids, they think the Civil War took place against the Germans. I once said to a customer, uh, oh, today's December 7th. That's the day the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor. And <laughs> I hate to say this, guys, but she believed me. It, well, I won't get into it. Uh, that's a deep pit, but uh, it is rather unfortunate. Um, so uh, I should have brought those pictures out of storage to show you them because you would have gotten a kick out of them. So here we have the uh, uh, line infantry, French line infantry. And these are made of metal. The figures are the only thing that's not metal is the rifles, which you can tell right away because look how it's bent. They're probably painted as well as you could uh, expect of a detail figure, maybe maybe a little bit better. The base is also made of metal, and was and uh, was cast with the figure. So it's not too, and it's not a piece that was attached to the figure. It was actually cast all in one, unless they super glued it on there or something. You know, that's a possibility. They may have, uh, they may have uh, super glued that on there. And then we have a, a my, jeez. Uh, here we go, guys. <laughs> when I was setting it up, I did that quite a bit, too. You can see that his rifle is bent. He needs the boiling water treatment. Can you see him clearly? Cause he looks really blurry to me. So I don't know if it's the camera. He's got very large pupils, doesn't he? But the painting on the Shaco is is uh, pretty good. And of course, there's some barrels that are really out of shape there, isn't there? Here, let's put this guy back. And let me put these figures back up so that we can do a panoramic sweep and show you the whole group. And more falling over. Okay, and uh, then we have a marching figure, which is this one here. Let me show you the back of the soldier. You know, for what it is, the, the uh, painting is not that bad. I bought these at a KB clearance outlet. And so I didn't pay very much. I think it was like four ninety eight, which figures out to be a uh, $1.25 a figure. And for a metal painted figure, that's not bad at all. Now, I bought these in July of 2000, and uh, here we are in July of 2023. Uh, they were also producing other figures other than these Napoleonics. They had World War II figures, Civil War figures, uh, ancient Romans. Um, of those figures, the only ones I still have are these Napoleonics and the Romans. The other figures I think I sold at the flea market. And uh, I think I got a, a dollar for a baggie of them. It's hard to make any money <laughs> at the flea market. Now, there's people that know what they're doing. They can make quite a, they could actually make a living out of it. But I don't know what I'm doing so clearly. And also, people can smell that you're desperate. And, uh, They'll do everything they can to uh, lowball you and cheat you.
you, you know, it's funny. You would you would think that people would have compassion on someone who has fallen on hard times, and it's just the opposite. People prey upon you if they realize that you're having hard times, and it's really disgusting. But that's how people are, I guess. I don't think I could do that to someone. All right, so here's the British guys. And uh, of these, my favorite pose is this one here. You can see that his bayonet is having some sort of a problem there. And uh, I like these figures. Now, I bought six sets because they each set came uh, four figures. I bought six of the French and five of the British. And I think I only bought five because I had a group of detail figures that my brother got me for Christmas in 1978. And they were the same size as these, of course, and painted very similarly. So I thought, well, I'll use the detail and just mix it with these and put it on the bookshelf. And that's why I bought only five of these sets as opposed to six. Can you imagine the ego if you had six Napoleons in one room? <laughs> Did you guys see that movie Waterloo with Christopher Plummer? I got to say, you know, a lot of war movies, they say the Battle of D-Day and they'll show a dozen guys storming the beach or in the case of saving private ryan they had a couple thousand but they used a lot of cgi also well the battle of waterloo the film i think came out in 70 was it or 71 rod steiger played napoleon and uh, christopher Plummer played the duke of wellington and i think the russian army provided the soldiers he was filmed in, in Russia or Yugoslavia or something like that. But it's very thrilling to watch because, you know, there's a – when they show the Scots Greys, the, uh, the cavalry charge, um, it's very impressive, guys. I'm sure you've seen it and uh, probably agree with me that Waterloo was a uh, – quite an extravaganza, epic in scale, because uh, it was all done before CGI. So that makes it even more impressive. Okay, guys, that's all I've got for you this time. I want to thank you for getting Iggy with it. And uh, if you haven't done so, why not go ahead and enlist in the Iggy Army? Uh, if you enlist in the Iggy Army, Washington will provide you with a $500 bonus, which you will receive the, in the year 3061. So you have to be patient. Okay, guys, thank you. I'm going to see you. I might make another video today. Today is July 4th. I might make one more video for you. And uh, I think this is episode 215. All right, that's all. See you later.